So now we're going to do it's woo woo time. These can be on Tuesday. And what if the, the background is that bringing the woo woo into the mundane to make it like it's not, but also talk about it. A lot of people either talk about the woo woo and they don't mind or they're in the closet. So now I want to combine the two. I have to act out a spirit guide to bring it where we feel guided without us having to figure out how to do it where it'd be perfect that we bring the woo-woo into the mundane. Well, this could be fun because we're going to include your husband for this. Okay. Um, time in the if he's willing to play, then we'll, we'll, we'll let him come. Yeah. Come <laughs> well, yeah, we'll do the time is an illusion, which hello, that should be interesting. Hi, this is Sylvia of Colorful Foresight, where we truly connect from within. And here we have Sherry H from Voices from the Swamp. So it's woo-woo time where we bring the woo-woo into the mundane. So today's topic, we're going to explore mediumship, uh, something that Sherry is, is, is um, learning to do. Right. <laughs> and I have, but I haven't uh, played with it too much. It's something we do naturally anyway, but to do it like out loud and all that, that's a whole different thing. Um, time is illusion. It's a topic. And we're actually going to bring in her husband who had passed on. Um, let's see how that goes. Let's just wing it. Let's go. Okay. We're gonna do the we're gonna ask your husband, actually, about if he had anything to say about time is the illusion, the topic. We have time in order to measure our progress. Where he is, there is no time. It doesn't exist. And he just, every now and again, he just, the, the, the reassurance will be together soon. Not like soon, soon, like I'm going to croak or something, but soon for him could be 50 years from now. Who knows? But he's just like, yeah, we're, we're going to be together. Don't worry about it. Because he was my soulmate. I know that through and through. I mean, it just, from the moment we were together, it just, it clicked in a way that it never clicked with anybody else in my life. Um. <clears throat> and I know he felt the same way because he told me that several times over the years. Um, Do you feel that now that you know you're exploring deeper with your mediumship, and because I know you've been into this for like thirty years plus, but now you're more open to explore your mediumship, that you could talk more deeply, d deeply with your husband. I know I'm you feel that you talk to him, but like to hear him. I'm, my desire is for my abilities to grow to the point that I can hear him more clearly so that we can continue this journey together. You know, it's not just me doing it by myself, but he's right next to me doing it with me. Um, that's my desire. I know he's with me. I know he's there to help me when he can. And I, I don't know how I know. I just know. Um, so in a lot of respects, when it comes to the mediumship abilities, I get very impatient with myself because I feel like I'm not progressing fast enough. And then I have to stop and step back and take a break and say, okay, when I'm ready for the next step, they're going to open that up to me. They're letting me get used to it right now and kind of play around with it and figure out how I want to get those messages in. Because once I get to a certain level, they're going to take off the training wheels and it's going to be full speed ahead. And I want to be ready for it when it happens. So. I think a perfect example for like the this, this woo-woo time, because even though you had interest in the metaphysics for a long time and you're exploring on YouTube, you have a regular job. And sometimes people are hiding and they don't need to be out and about, but uh, bringing the woo-woo into the mundane, we all have intuition. Uh, some people choose to maybe develop more or they're gifted more, but everybody has intuition. So, uh, you know, you have a good balance. Let me add this. When I first started doing this, getting into all of this, I didn't say anything at work about it. When I started my channel, I didn't say anything to anybody about it understanding you know? and i had been at it 
about a month or two, I guess. And one of my professors had walked in my office. Uh, they needed something from me. I don't know what. And um, and they said something about, well, what are you doing this? What you got planned this weekend? I said, oh, I've got a live stream this weekend. And they got in. Now, I work in the computer science department, right? So they immediately perked up and went, a live stream? What kind of live stream? I said, on YouTube. And they're like, well, well what are you doing? And I said, I'm a content creator. <laughs> and they thought about that for a minute. They said, well, what do you do? What, what content do you create? I said, well, I read Oracle and tarot cards. And they just kind of like looked at me funny and they said, really? There's people that watch that? And I said, oh yeah. I said, that's how I found out about it. I said, I'm psychic, you know. I said, I just don't tell people because it freaks them out. And they just had to think about it. They just had this like really confused kind of look on their face. Like I had just, you know, angels from heaven had just come down and spoken to them. They were like blown away. And a couple of days later, they came by. I guess it was like the following week. They came by my office and said, um, yeah, I caught you for a few minutes on your channel. I went and looked. I said, oh, really? I said, did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, it looked kind of cool. And that's all he said. And how did he feel about that now? I have to start with saying, number one, when he was alive, he didn't believe in any of this stuff. Perfect. All. He fit with the mundane. The few times that I would bring up that, yeah, I've seen a ghost. Yeah, I lived in a haunted house. He would get upset say, don't say that. I'd say, why? It's the truth. No, that doesn't exist. I'm like, don't tell me it don't exist. I've seen it and experienced it for myself, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, he did not believe in it in any way, shape, or form. Now I think he enjoys it because he can come mess with me. <laughs> he likes to tug on my hair. Um, when we were married and my hair was long, it's like down past my waist. I didn't cut it because he liked it long, so he had to brush it. I was like, if you want it long, you get to brush it because it's very thick. Um, but for the longest time, I never got any, I never really got messages, but then I didn't know to ask for them mm -hmm. because I didn't know any of this stuff myself. Um, and then I had a, I won a free reading from a psychic on the radio who called me up and did a reading over the telephone back in like, I don't know, 2008, 2007, something like that. And <clears throat> now this man told me things about my husband and my past life that he had no way of knowing at all. Um, he would be like, you know, your husband says, and the first time he said that phrase, your husband says, I started to shut down because I was like, no, he wouldn't say anything because he doesn't believe in this crap. And yet the first thing he said to me, well, your husband says he didn't believe in any of this, but now he knows better. So, wow. So I was like blown away at that point. And then he said, do you have technical issues with equipment at home? Just out of the blue, things don't want to turn on or turn off or this, that, that. I'm like, yeah. And he said, yeah, he said he's sorry about that. He's just trying to get your attention. Uh, he was an appliance repairman, maintenance man, appliance repairs. That's what he did for a living. And how would you know that? How would you know that electronic stuff is what he worked on? Right. This was back before you could look up anybody online and get anything you want to know about. Them. Um, so that was the second thing that was like ding, 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 ding in my head. Um there were times when I could feel him and when I would start getting that feeling, I'm wearing a shirt right now. I this know. is the only thing I kept of his. So this, beautiful. This, shirt. this was his favorite shirt and I kept it. I gave all of his other clothes away. Um, you want to talk about serendipity? I gave all of his clothes away and that included a drawer full of ties, you know, silk ties that he wore for church. Because he dressed full three-piece suit when he went to church. Um, we had given all that stuff to Goodwill. 
And about six months later, my son was like, he needed a tie for a special event. And I was like, baby, I don't have the money to go to the store and buy a tie right now. It's paydays a week away. He says, well, I got a few bucks. I figured I'd go over to Goodwill. I said, okay, do that. He went to Goodwill. He came back home with three ties. Cost him like five bucks. And I'm looking at him and I said, those are your daddy's ties. And he said, no, they're not. I said, flip them over and look and see. Because I had, because my husband was short. I had had to cut and sew the ties to make them shorter so they weren't too long. And every day wow. I had my stitching and stuff in it. That's funny. And I was like, okay. I mean, whatever <laughs> would have possessed him out of a table full of ties, he's digging through and he picks three and it's the three of over all his dads. Talk about mind blown. He and I both were tripping over that for months. Um, and you know what? You know what the other serendipity before I were telling her we were going to work on time and delusion. And she told me about the shirt. And I, I, and so, and we were working and we, we've been doing videos on mediumship. So that's another serendipity right there. Like, I think he would be thoroughly intrigued with what's going on and with what I'm doing. Because when I decided this is what I'm supposed to do and I started, you know, I got cards and I started learning. My son and my brother don't buy into this stuff at all. Um, but they're like, yeah, hey, that's what you want to do. Go for it. <laughs> you know, it was like they did, just didn't really matter to them. And then when they saw that I was really committed about it, my son made a point of rebuilding my computer so he could handle the extra work that I would be doing on it. My brother made a point of putting in the hardware and everything to hang curtains so I could have privacy in my section of room. I just close the curtains and they know, okay, she's online, you know. Um, so I look forward to that, you know, as you grow, but also that you can have the more deep, deeper relationship with your husband. <clears throat> Yeah, and that's the same, benefit of it's working. the same with my mom. I mean, my mom is literally twenty five feet that way from me, sitting in an urn on a on a shelf, where we made a small family altar for her, and I very much feel her around. First time I asked anyone for a reading on her, it was actually Susan Lynn and Allie, mm. who back when they did a show together. And it was back in the beginning stages when Allie was constantly saying, no, I'm not psychic. No, I'm not psychic. Everybody kept telling her, yeah, you are. <laughs> um, and I had just in chat asked, you know, was there a message for my husband? And before Susan could even open her mouth to draw breath, I mean, a message for my mom, excuse me. Um, before Susan could even draw breath, Allie suddenly looked up and said, she says to tell you she remembers everything. Boy, that was a sucker punch to the gut. Because at that point in time, nobody knew, I had not said anything to anyone, that my mom died from dementia. And so I had just said that she had passed. I didn't say how. And for Allie to just, out of the blue, she just, you know, completely out of character for her at that point in time. And she's just like, oh, your mom says she remembers everything. And she doesn't remember saying this because I've told her that before. She's like, I don't remember doing that. I was like, oh, yeah. I said, I said it blew my socks off because all I could think of was how in the world did you know that? How did you know that that's how she died in a lot of respects alone? Because she didn't know, know who any of us were. But then later on, she let me know that despite everything, somewhere way down deep inside, she was still aware. Everyone who has that disease, when it robs you of your memory, they're still in there. They're still aware of what's going on, what's being done to them or for them. <clears throat> they just can't pull it out, you know, it's, um, which is sad, but... 
And with my husband, it was just a matter of the first time I asked anyone for a reading on him, it was Sharon Lee from uh, Strawberry Rhubarb. Mm -hmm. And she kind of sat back for a minute and tears came down her cheeks. She was like, wow, he really loved you. I mean, she couldn't control it. She started crying. She was like, I've never felt anybody love someone that strongly before. And it just blew me away because I knew he loved me, but it was like, it just wasn't a reaction I was expecting to get, you know? And right. for her to then turn right. around and say a couple of days later, I don't remember doing that. I'm like, oh, yeah, you did on air. <laughs> I wasn't the only one that saw it, you know? So, um, and Sharon yeah. the type that liked to make a lot of jokes, especially um, back then. So for her to like tear up, she would feel. Oh like yeah, that's what that's what blew me away because at that point in time, she was. Still, that's when she and Lisa were still doing nasty women together, yeah, right. and so it, everything was party time on Tuesday nights, you know, and a lot of joking around and kidding, and and I had asked, you know, just in general in chat, they were taking questions at night. I, any message from my, from uh, my husband? It was the first time I'd ever asked anybody for a message from my husband. And her reaction just knocked my socks off because it was so out of character for her and how she was and how she behaved online, you know, that we all knew her as. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that was that was heavy duty for me, you know.